How are y'all doing? Welcome back to the Revenue Clinic Podcast Show. I'm your host, marketing strategist, Tristan Sutton. Every week we bring you an expert or someone that's excelling in their industry or business to help you take your revenue to the next level or really cure your revenue ailments. That's why we call it the Revenue Clinic. So um, thank you all for coming back. This week we are talking about turning your passions into profits, right? So if you're that corpreneur or that, that person that wants to get out of the the, the cubicle plantation and start your business. How do you turn that thing that excites you, that you're passionate about, that wakes you up into a, a income generating business to where you can eventually leave your corporate job and take it to the next level? So this week we have Mr. Carl King, MC, Motivator Maze. That's right. In the that's building, right. the that's wedding right. MC, the only wedding MC in that's the United right. States right. of America. That's right. Keep maybe going. in the world. Keep that's going. That's good. Let's do it. <laughs> Keep going. Yep. Who has turned his passion of his gift of gab, entertaining yeah. crowds, moving the audience um, into a viable business to where now you are close to your fifth, 500th wedding that you've, yep. you've emceed. Yep, we're close. We're close there. So tell us a little about yourself, Carl. So for those that don't know, the name is Carl Mays. Carl with a K. I say that because I'm special, <laughs> uh, like the cereal. Uh, <laughs> you definitely special. I know, right? <laughs> and Mays like Frankie Beverly. It's spelled M-A-Y-E-S so that you don't forget it. Listen, the biggest thing is uh, I, I am a, a graduate of Prairie View A&M University by way of Texas A&M. By and way. I hear they produce productive people. Right? We do. We do. <laughs> yeah, but Prior producers are productive people. So, um, but yeah, I went on. My bad. I went on. I, you know, I talk with my hands a lot, so I got to make sure I don't just keep hitting mics and everything. But uh, yeah, I went on to uh, um, MC quite a bit of uh, stuff throughout my tenure. And I think for the last uh, 31 years, I've been I've been an MC. From anything from corporate events to uh, uh, um, hood events to <laughs> clubs to you know just anything anything that that, that needed somebody to be able to get from ratchet to righteous Ra ratchet to right I like that. that that's exactly it so which means that I'm a man that's a, 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 a many many talents I definitely can do any audience and uh, um, I learned all of that you know as I was growing up because you know I come from the entertainment industry and and being an entertainer you know just try to find ways to be able to you know. Turn it into a profitable thing. So gotcha. that's how I got here. Gotcha. But tell us, what's your main take home? What's your main bag? What's your main job? So my main job is, uh, I uh, well, I was a professor of sociology up until January. Mm -hmm. January, I just became a director of student activities at Houston Community College. Mm. Shout out to HCC. So that's professor, what I do. Professor MC and right. director MC. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. So I tell people I'm, I'm, I'm Clark Kent in the daytime and at night. Call it what you want. <laughs> <laughs> Superman. That's what I'm going to call you broke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, right? So tell us about, you know, you're in the entertainment industry, emceeing events. Yeah. Um, but there's never been a wedding MC before. So how did you say, you know what? There's this opportunity for this business. What was your mindset to say, I'm going to blaze this trail and become a wedding MC? Well, that, that, that that's, a, that's a very, very great question. You could have been a bar mitzvah MC. Right. <laughs> You're right. Right. It could, I guess all, all different kinds of scenarios MC. Yeah, you said, right. I want to be a wedding MC. Because that you're right. Well, let me tell you, say this. First of all, I, for those that don't know, I've been MCing before uh, it was actually a, a thing, especially, you know, on the African American side, you know, in the nightlife. I think that, um, you know, there are a lot of them now. So, you know, and we, you know, and kudos to them. But I've been doing this for quite some time. So even when nobody wasn't doing it, you know, I just kind of poured myself into mm -hmm. to being able to say, you know what, people need to be guided. So one thing I don't do is I don't distract, you know, when it's a music scene, I don't distract music. I actually add, add value to it. Mm -hmm. So uh, the way that I got into the wedding aspect of it is I've been doing uh, I put out some albums over a number of years and then I, you know, kind of outgrew it, uh, it became uh uninteresting to record anymore because people could record so fast yeah. and I actually enjoyed the process of recording. So, you know, it just kind of took me out of it. And um, the next thing I know, I had a friend from college that called me and said, Hey, you know, King, would you, would you emcee my wedding? Hmm. And I was like, at that time, I think I only been to like two weddings in my life. And I was like, yeah, I, you know, I'll knock it out. You know, my whole thing is that, you know, if, 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 if I'd never done it, I, I, I wasn't going to be at a point where I, you know, shunned it. I was like, right. you know, this is an opportunity to learn something else. Yeah. So, of course, you didn't have Google. You didn't have, you know, the net wasn't like it was when I did my first wedding. I just said, man, let me just try to figure it out. So yeah. I would talk to a few people, do it, did my own little R&D, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
friends. Just friends. You know, call it, hey man, so at a wedding, I mean, what, what normally they celebrate? It was like, don't forget the first dance, don't forget the, you know, things like that. Yeah. And so I jotted a few things down and I approached it the way that I felt like would be entertaining. Hmm. So anyway, not long story short, I knocked that wedding out and I remember it too, because it was right over there off West Ham. I mean, like, like it was yesterday and that was almost uh, 18 years ago. 18. Yeah, and uh, there was a, a, a Caucasian lady that owned the venue, and she came up to me at the end, end of the, the reception and was like, she said, sir, do you have a card? And I was like, uh, no, ma'am. I said, <laughs> that was my first time doing it. And, it, and this is going to sound weird because y'all looking at me with this bald head, but I had long braids too. So I was really still connected to the hip-hop industry, and this is hip-hop dude, but I'm very, very good at articulating. Mm -hmm. So I know how to change it up. So you're like a Kawhi later. Yeah, like that's Kawhi. right. That's exactly that's what I was, right? I had a bead, so I didn't <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so so it, I wasn't I wasn't serious about it. It was just something I did because I was good at you know entertaining. And she was like, "Do you have a card?" I was like, "No, ma'am. I was my first time doing it." And she was like, um, "Well, sir, I have been in the wedding industry twenty eight years, and I had never seen anybody do what you just did." Wow. And I was like, "Oh yeah." And I was like, you know, so I so I thought about it, but of course, like any other person, I'm in my youthful thought process. I'm still in the streets. So, you know, it kind of went the one in, out the other. But, it, it can't, of course, I probably compartmentalized it and it stuck in there somewhere. So it wasn't until about five years later that I actually started, you know, doing what I do to, to create the brand and, and, and yeah. make it into an actual business. But, gotcha. yeah. So tell us exactly what a wedding MC is and then how you evolved it into it. I'm glad you asked that. For those that are out there, I don't DJ. A DJ is a disc jockey. I don't collect music. I don't I don't ride with music. I don't have speakers. I don't have all your job is the, to spin records. I, yeah, I don't spend yeah, I don't do none of that. Yeah, that's right. And, and that's no offense to any DJs out there because I love them because I work with so many of them. But I I I travel with an expensive microphone. That is my investment. That's my toolbox. That's you know when they say invest in your business. So I invested in my business. And uh, so I am a microphone connoisseur. So outside of my wife, I'm also married to a microphone. <laughs> So, you know, so me and me and the microphone know each other very well. I know, you know, I know about all kinds of mics from omnidirectional mics. I just know about them because I know how to use them. When you see people and you grab and they grab it around the rim, they don't really know how to talk on the mic because you're not supposed to cup it because it can't get any sound through. Right. So that's that's another story. But the biggest thing about it is I am a microphone connoisseur. I tell people as of late, I am the Ryan Seacrest of weddings. Oh, maybe that'll. Maybe that'll yes, get them okay. to really understand. I, I could picture that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. So I mean, so, so everything is a presentation. So you know, yeah, we got I got the entire reception, unlike anybody has ever done before. And that's not to take anything away from any DJs, but I always say a DJ is stuck. Mm. They're stuck behind a, 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 some turntables, right? And in their own way, I mean, to be able to control music and be able to entertain an audience, it can be done, but it's very, very difficult because there's no personable. Contact so you it. you get the crowd engaged. You make it a memorable experience. A very very interest. memorable experience. Okay, it's father daughter dance. Now let's cut the cake. You right. make it hype. Give them right. some examples. So so I'll give you an example. Um, here is here's some social dynamics um, that are inside of weddings. You have two families uh, that don't know either you know either or the bride or the groom, and a few of them might know both. But the bride and groom, when they came to you and they said, they, they said, this is you know what we want to do. You said, this is what your cost is in your own way, whether they've invested in the cake, the dress, the, the venue, whatever. They've, they've spent a lot of money because in their brains, mm -hmm. they want these people to cross pollinate. Right. And but they didn't take into consideration all the social dynamics that are in there. Right. So one thing your mom and dad used to tell you when you were small was don't invite all your friends from all parts of your life to one space. Right. Some of y'all get that. Right. Remember. Don't bring your hood friends around your coworkers. Right. Don't put your coworkers around all you, your other. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, cousins. Right. Because you don't want you want to protect your integrity as much as possible. Gotcha. But at one place where all these people do come to life mm -hmm. is at a wedding. Absolutely. And so and that's an uncomfortable scene, because what happens is you have people that, that really love you. That might be your hood friends. They like, ah. You know, but they got to get dressed up this day. And it's like, this ain't normally how I dress. So I ain't feeling a little comfortable. But hey, man, congrats. You know, they want to get a drink. They're trying to drink prison when they normally turn up. 
you know, put the pinky up. right. You put the pinky up. Then you got you got people that heard you got a good looking brother, and then and and all of a sudden they so distracted, like girl, that must be his brother right there. So they're so distracted by so many dynamics. Yeah. I'm the dude that comes in and says, I'm gonna tell you how to be today. So listen. So you create the paradigm. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna break all that down and I'm gonna say, listen, y'all could have been anywhere else in the world, but you decided to be here with this couple. We're gonna leave that bougie outside. We family in here today. So guess what? All of you all in here that didn't come to celebrate the same way you need to be, because we're about to celebrate the union of these two people. And at this point, people are losing their time. Well, okay, well, this is where I need to be then. <laughs> right? So we so so now we're gonna knock the social walls to the floor. And we're going to give these people what they need in order to make this the most memorable night for this bride and groom. Mm. And I am the guy that gets you there for the next four hours. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So that's how I put that together, man. <laughs> we like that. See how, see how he had a system and process for that? Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. what he's going to say. No, exactly what he's going to say, when to say it, all of the above. That's right. That's yeah. right. So let's go back to the braids and fades era. Okay. The lady told you. <laughs> This could be a business for you. Would one year out the other. Yeah. What was the moments like? You know what? I can really make a living off this. Well, I think that that when I really started to realize, because um, it was it was years later. So I'll, I'll give you an example. So that happened in about two at two thousand. So it was about when I, when I start really thinking about it as a business. It was like two thousand seven. Mm -hmm. In two thousand seven, I mean, so now Google is in play. So now mm -hmm. it's not. It's probably not as much information, of course, that is on there now at that time. But it was information out there. Right. So me, I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm starting to create, and I'm thinking, okay, so there really isn't anybody out here doing this. Right. So nobody sees it as a genre. They they loop it in because the hardest thing that I had to take into consideration is that okay, you're going into something that is not a an actual created genre, yeah. and you are about to put this on your back. You're blazing the trail to say that you are going to teach people how meaning about about this genre, and you also have to make sure that you brand it at the same time, which is a very very hard thing to do because and, and my wife, you know, she would say too. It would it would almost tick her off that when when uh, they would say oh he's a wedding MC and they were like oh so so how many how many how many weddings have you DJ <laughs> so she would say he's not a DJ and I was like okay baby look we got to approach that different that Oklahoma right <laughs> right <laughs> so because because in her own way she's saying she you know she we have to teach people like yeah. they see acronyms when they see DJ MC and it, and it just wow. it kind of jumbles in their head because all of those people have been to clubs they've been to nightlife that's so when they, they when they to. yeah that's what they used to what they hear and they just like MC DJ same thing no it's not so you're reprogramming you, the market you're re reprogramming the market at the same time so I'm teaching people that a true master of ceremonies like even though I can get you turned up in the nightlife right? right so you can catch me at a club I can get you turned up but then you can find me also to emceeing like a fashion show. Yeah. And being articulate or uh, being at, you know, I do ring announcing, standing in the red corner, weighing in it. You know, I mean, I, I'm i a true master of ceremony. So there are some people that are one dimensional. Yeah. But I, I'm across the board. So no matter what genre you put me in, I transform. So for those who are just now catching up, he's turned his gift into profit. That's right. His passions into profit. That's right. So his gift is entertaining, getting the crowd hype, right. um, keeping the flow of an event. Going. That's right. So what is your gift, your passion that you're really good at, that you feel like, man, God really blessed me with That's this. right. I'm good at this. That's right. Now, figure out how you can turn that into a stream of revenue. That's right. Versus Make it profitable. You, I talk into a microphone and get paid for it. That's right. Conducted close to 500 weddings, mm -hmm. galas, things like that. What are you good at? What are you good at as far as um, talking, things like that? But then also come up with a viable business option. So That's right. let's talk about the fact that you trailblazing this niche, mm -hmm. reprogramming the market, but you found a viable artist. Because how many weddings occur? Was it every day a thousand? Or so, a so no. So, so you have you have about uh, two point two million couples get married in this country alone every year. That's a strong market. Yeah, two point two. <laughs> that's exactly right, and, and and it's something that people do because it's considered one of our life milestones. Right. 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 So, so in our lives, you know, we have milestones: we graduate college, graduate high school, graduate, you know, have a child, yeah. buy a house. Over the business, I mean, those are milestones. But one of the ones that people do, no matter what, mm -hmm. is get married. Yeah, they do. right. So, <laughs> so when you talk about two point two million couples married in this country a year, that's approximately sixty one hundred couples a day. One hundred sixty one couples. Sixty one hundred couples a day. Sheesh. 
So so it's a lot of opportunity. So, right. So when you talk <laughs> about it, and of course that 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 you know encompasses you know so many different so many different dy- dynamics. I mean, whether it's you know um you know heterosexual homosexual relationships, it, all of that in there is, is what I'm considering. Right. You know, African American to to Asian American to Mexican American, all of those together, 2.2 million weddings a year. You know that go on in couples that get married a year yeah. in this country, and that's just in this country. That's not just talking about country. a worldwide worldwide understanding. So, what are we trying to say with that to you? Find something that has a built-in demand that's going to be sustainable. That's right. Two million people a year was a hundred something a day yeah. getting married. Yeah, that's a strong demand for a product or service that he has. That that's right. It's sustainable, and we're going to talk about how he's also getting ready to grow this business that's right. into. Uh, franchises and models. That's right. Yeah, that's right. We got, yeah, we got, we got, we got stages to it. Got yeah, there's levels right. to this. That's right. Like the young street philosopher in Philadelphia. So. <laughs> there's <laughs> levels to this. Stuff. Levels to it. Man. So, you know, your, your wife is out here checking people saying, hey, he's an MC, mm-hmm. not a DJ, but t- tell us about how you built it into a business now. Okay. So, so I went on to uh, create Carl Mays Enterprises. Okay. You know, and, and, for, and for the record, I, I recognized even as a as a young boy that um, being in front of audiences was my safe zone. Right. So um, you know, for some people, it, it may be a very uncomfortable zone. But I always say the real world is is really the, the part that makes me nervous. You know, in life, you know, <laughs> when we're like as soon as this lights camera action goes off, I go well. I guess I gotta go. <laughs> You know, so so my, but some people they be like, "Ooh, I'm so I'm so glad this is over," and they leave out here all sweating, and they yeah. just like, "Ooh," but I'm in I'm in my comfort zone. Right it's your gift. It's my gift, and I and I recognize that this is this is where I'm safe. Whether it's in front of the camera, whether it's whether it's on the on the stage, on the microphone, in front of people, that is where I mean I can't go wrong because even if it's something goes wrong, I know how to make it right. Right. right but right. for some people out there, it gets really weird. So I've recognized that. And I said to myself, wow, I don't have a template, though. Mm. Like, like, how do you how do you mm. make it profitable to be able to do what I do? Now, again, I can go get some gigs and, you know, be like Michael Buffer and do, you know, boxing <laughs> and a million dollars every time I say this particular slogan. Right. That's fine. And then but that's still, you know, that's still him getting paid for a service. But like. If, if he's not stacking that paper, you asking yourself, OK, what happens, Michael Bubba? What What's next? Yeah. I mean, did he take it and he wrote it into some other other investments? What? Right. So on my end, it's cool. I, I get paid for gigs. But from a long term nature, I got posed with a question, you know, about two years ago from a mentor of mine who said, you know, hey, man, what's 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 your outro? Hmm. And I was like, huh? He's like, I mean, what what's the out game like? Like. Yeah, like, where does game. it go? Because he was like, you know, as you get older, he said, you're not going to be, you know, this 75 year old man, you know, going to MC a I'm whole lot of events. Though, you huh? know, you pop lock. You know, <laughs> right, right. right. Well, go, yeah. But, you know, he was like, if that's the case, you want to you want you get that older. You want if you coming out the house at 70 to do something or oh, you got to be cutting the check. Yeah. Like the check check. Right. You get me like yeah. my knee about to be tripping. I mean, <laughs> whatever. But he was like, you know, how how do you how do you take this? And make sure that everything that you've done and how many that you've accomplished does not happen in vain. Mm. And and I and he said, don't answer it now. I need you to be able to keep that at the forefront of your frontal lobe so you can figure out how you're going to be able to manifest that. Yeah. And yeah. So which leads us, you know, to the next thing. So, is- so so you, you brought up pay. I don't think you all may realize that he gets paid a nice chunk of money to yeah. not only perform the service. But if he has to go out of town, yeah. the uh, client pays for his travel, yeah. room, and lodge, and That's right. things like that. So That's right. we're not talking like you know a couple of hundred dollars what you pay for the DJ at your kid's birthday party. Right, <laughs> right. So he's made this a very viable business. That's so right. What are you going to do in your entrepreneurial world that where you can say, hey, I'm not only building for my service, but the travel and things like that? Because he's getting flued out. You're international, yeah. business, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. So, so you know. When, that's when it really became real to me when when I realized that uh, people see me at weddings. Like a lot of my business comes from people seeing me at a wedding. Right. You know, because again, whenever whenever you create a, create a genre that that people are not familiar with, mm-hmm. they they see it. Well, you know, because they said that what I see, the heart believe. Right? Right, right, right. They're like, oh my god, and they know somebody's getting married, or either they're getting married, or some. They're like, yo, man, you got a car? Look, we we need to bring you to blah blah blah. We live in Michigan. Do you travel? I was like, brother, listen. <laughs> I'm 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 all over. Yes, I say you take yeah. yeah. So they take care of the of course the flight and the room. You know however the travel is if it's drivable whatever the case may be and we get there and we make it happen. But yeah, all that's assumed by you know the the client. 
and then you have a system and process. Mm -hmm. So talk to about how you went from just getting gigs to, you know, getting referred at weddings. Now you have a, a booking agent yeah. that um, you're booked out and you have a mm -hmm. flow for that. Tell us about that process. So, so, so the way it works is it, you, if, if a person is interested in being able to, to, to book the wedding MC, the first thing that they do is they, you know, of course, of course contact the information that whether it's on the card or the website, the website mm -hmm. is the wedding MC, the wedding MC.net. But once that contact comes through, then we, we try to make sure the data is available mm -hmm. and, and then it, answer any questions that need to be answered, you know, give them a synopsis, answer any question that needs to be answered. Sometimes it doesn't, it, people don't have too many questions because most of the people that call or even yeah. that they, they seen it. Yeah. You know, now if it's just a dry uh, referral, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, my brother say you dope. I'm like, I don't okay. know what you do though. Right, right. You know, like, but, but man, so 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 what you do? You do you a hype man? I'm like, brother, listen, ask your brother <laughs> at this point because you know because because even if I say it, it's like you can't visualize. Yeah. But I think the brother is the edifying or the person that referred him is such the edify. Like, yo, you need this dude, that kind of thing. So if, if unless it's that kind of case, we don't necessarily have to go into. You know, uh, being able to give such a synopsis, but the most of the time the, the explanation is not needed because people have seen it. And they just want to know how much it costs and do you have a date? Man, I just thought about a process that will help streamline that process, that okay. system for you. So have what's called a discovery call. Okay. With a Calendly. Well, that's the yeah, I I, yeah. Calendly. And then what you can include on there is a link that says, "Hey, watch this video before we get on the phone." And, and then, then you already have your highlight reel of what you got. Gotcha. Got you. Gotcha. Boom. So Calendly.com. Yeah, I'm not an affiliate, but that's a tool that you can use to schedule discovery calls or just, you know, initial conversations and you send it out. They can pick a time that fits on your calendar and theirs. It syncs and then automatically. But you can have information in there like right. link that goes to your website if you want them to check you out first. So just a little tip to help you with your revenue. Element. That's also that's, that's a great, great thought process. We also thought about doing uh, instead of just a, just an FAQ page, but like an FAQ vid. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because like reading it and hearing me. And video performs much better. It does, man. But 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 I, I just believe because you you're looking my you looking in my eyes right now, man. I'm, I'm real about this, right? But I can't say that on FAQ, like, look, yeah. I'm real about this. You like you real about this. What? <laughs> Not gonna work. Right. Not gonna translate as well. Right. Okay. <laughs> man, so so all right. So we talked about some systems and processes. So now how you plan on scaling this opportunity? So the way that we're going to scale it is, um, well, so so the next layer what we're working on right now, and of course, I'm, I'm, I'm still doing my little R&D, but I'm also building it at the same time. But uh, we're starting the Wedding MC University. So mm -hmm. I've, re I've realized Talk that. Talk about that. Yeah, I, we, we will. I've, I've realized that um, I, I can't I can't be at all of them. Can't. <laughs> There's two million. Right. There's only one of you. There's only one of me. So and 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 and, and what really brought that to life is of course the question that that my um uh, my mentor you know asked me. That was first. And second, um I was in San Diego and uh, I was at a, a bar at the hotel and uh, there was a gentleman that just he was just asking just generic questions. And of course, sometimes you know when you get through you know performing or doing something. In the own way, you know, at this point, I'm, I'm trying to catch up. The, the, the screens were on ESPN. Gotcha. My body language was like this. I'm to to drink. Yeah, and, and the guy came up and he was just like, man, he said, you really are great at what you do. I said, oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> and then his body language is facing me. And he's, you know, he's really in tune. And he's like, so let me ask you this. He said, so you have a website? And I was like, yeah. And he, he told him, he said, how does your website make money for you? So now I'm thinking, okay. Is this about to be a telemarketing pitch? <laughs> Not or, no, or no, or, yeah, you know, so, so I'm like, okay, I didn't know where we were going with it. But then he got to this part where he said, you know, his sites, you know, do almost, you know, fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a month. Wow. And he said, I said, huh? <laughs> like, so now my body know? language goes from <laughs> to. Uh, so yeah, so <laughs> tell me. So anyway, long story short, that was a, that ended up being a two uh, about a two and a half hour conversation, man. And I and and I, I think you know the guy probably knew. I mean, you know, people would probably pay him millions, or probably do, to be able to just you know source information. It's kind of like you know Mr. Sutton here. You know, he has a lot of information, and of course, you know, with Ash University, he charges you. You gonna get you, you gonna get charged. But at the end of the day, sometimes just on the Slim Jam, you in the store, you drop a couple of nuggets. He could have charged you for that, but he gave that to you for free. So. That's kind of how that man, he was in that zone. Absolutely. And I caught him in his element. He was like, okay, you yeah. cut the check. Follow, follow me on Facebook at Tristan. He said, right. Free <laughs> right, right. So, so I just think that, that, you know, sometimes when people have already kind of 
assume themselves in a, in a particular area and they have some information, you know, in, in God to just the universe a certain way, you got to just be, be open to listen. Right, right. So I was in listen mode and, and, he, and he fed me something. So on the plane ride back, I was just in deep thought like, yo. Let's get I, it. Yeah. So, so I'm putting it together. I'm thinking about the conversation with the mentor and I put it all together. So, let, you know, hence we are now, you know, um, in the works of uh, the Wedding MC University. Mm. And uh, the Wedding MC University is basically going to take people that are very similar to me because, you know, we always say there are there are a million versions of you out in this world. Right. <clears throat> and if there are a million versions of you and and probably will be born, you know, so you want to have something in place for them and create hope for them. So so my thing is that if, if I'm trailblazing, don't let it be in vain. If I'm trailblazing, you know, I need to make sure that, you know, I'm 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 seeing what's what's out there, what the availability is, because there are people that I don't care if they're magicians or singers or actors or actresses. Everybody can't just lay in that genre and expect to become Will Smith or, yeah. or Queen Latifah or, you know, or whoever. Everybody you know, can't Angelina be Jordan, Jordan, but you can be Pippin. That, right. That's exactly right. And there are so many other layers in it. So 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 if you're that person that that practices monologues mm. and you're going you're getting ready to walk out the house right now to to an audition. Yeah. You know, just know that that practicing you're doing, that articulation, those mannerisms, those facial expressions, those, yeah. you know, impromptu pieces that, that you're developing. Mm -hmm. You don't have to just do them in that. Mm. So along your way to reach the top of what pinnacle you're going after, turning your gifts into other. I'm telling you, you now can be able to come through the Wedding MC University, mm -hmm. and that be an arm of something that you you can do even when you're not on set working on the next movie or whatever. So it's like, hey, that's another facet of who you are. Another stream of income. As well. That's another stream of income. So so in we'll call it another facet of funds. Another facet of funds. I like that. Yeah, that's good. That, I like that. So, so yeah. So you, so you're giving opportunity for people to not have to lay in just one genre mm -hmm. with a skill set that they have that was that's probably been given to them by God as well. Wow, wow. So you're just tuning in and catching up. Basically, he's telling you that he has a program in place that he'll teach you how to do what he's doing, and you can use your gifts, your passions to get more profit or a facet of funds. That's right. Um, facet learn of how funds. to be another wedding MC. So if you have the gift of gab. Mm -hmm. um, great at crowd control and entertaining people check him out at his website right yeah. now the wedding mc.net he's going to have fill out a form i'm sure he can get you the information yeah. later on yeah wow, that's pretty awesome yeah it's it's i think i think it's going to be really really nice we have some other things we're getting ready to do i'm uh, um uh this is something that, as a matter of fact uh, uh tristan and i have spoke about it um i'm going to to put up a couple of things of trying to get some ideas from people of what if if, if and it's so weird because it's it's so broad and I need to strategically point at people who can passionately answer the question. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you were if you came into to the course, what are some things you felt like you you would really want to learn? I, I know what I would include in it, but it's nothing like hearing it from people. But then you don't want just random people because no, if you don't no. MC, yeah. and you ain't never MC, maybe like a poetry night or something, you know, like you you don't know. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's kind of like I haven't thrown it out there to just yeah. just as a pose because yeah. it's because it's, it's 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 niche. I mean, sometimes you just got to jump, though. Yeah, no, no. I, yeah. I don't mind doing it. I'm going to put it up. But I'm just saying, in my own way, I'm just like, you know, okay, so what do you do? What do you <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So it's kind of weird. It's gotcha. different from being able to say that, you know, uh, uh, I, I don't know. I think if everybody's painted a wall before. So if I was helping people become yeah. uh, painters, you know, right. the generic person might be able to answer that question because I painted my children's room, right? Gotcha. So it's like, no, but I can't say that with him seeing. No. I'm always outsourced. I delegate the elevator. Okay, <laughs> delegate the elevator. Okay, I, 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 I'm not mad at that. So, you know, <laughs> I'm not mad at that. I, at this point, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to assume this, this heavy expense when it's yeah. something I feel like you know we can, right. we can try to figure out our own self. So, so what he's done has he's refined his craft, refined his systems and processes mm -hmm. and his business model, and now he's getting ready to make it duplicatable by making it online and get that automated money. That's right. So too many entrepreneurs start out the bat, say, hey, I want to do a business and make it online. Right. And just have a bunch of people buy an online course. Right. But don't have the actual core business model down. So sometimes right. you have to make sure that that thing is working right and well oiled. That's right. Before you can duplicate it to the masses. That's right. That, that's want, exactly it. You don't want a bunch of whack wedding MCs. No, not at all. And and and, <laughs> and, 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 and and but that's but that's phase number three. So yeah. so the course. So even though the person comes to the wedding MC university, they're not necessarily they're not necessarily rocking the the wedding MC brand. Yeah. If you know, we're going to create another another aspect of that. Of course, the wedding MC brand will be rocked by people who actually have auditioned. 
Okay, you know, you. and, and you oh, know, so there's levels to the level, right? Of course, and, and like people Mario. like yourself, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> people like yourself, people that have seen what I do, some of the wedding planners I've worked with, you know, they they will be part of the panel to be able to decide that these are people that need to come through because at that particular point, now they become yeah. the wedding MC as well. Gotcha. So it's like you know, so your name is Tristan Sutton, but you're you're with the wedding MC, yeah. the wedding MC, you know, and 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 at that particular point, if, if somebody you know comes to the booking site when we do get that all constructed, mm-hmm. it'll have your not just your bio and a pic of you, but it'll also have a video of you just saying, "Hey, how's it going? My name is Tristan Sutton. Wow. Uh, I'm a man. I speak six languages, but I love people. And guess what? If you smile, I know I've done my job. You know that kind of thing. You know whatever." So, so those are those will be, you know, that that's again, those are those are other phases of it. But, but the primary phase right now is to be able to get this this wedding MC University launched, mm-hmm. loaded, and, and and out there, so that you know, just a random person. So yeah. let's just say yourself generically came through the wedding MC University. You finish the program mm-hmm. and you go and try to MC your first few weddings, and and you you kind of like it, and you say, I'm a developer brand. Did do your thing, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the day. But if you if my my objective. Is to be able to cut your learning curve in half. Gotcha. You right? Because you don't want to take those L's in front of you. You don't want to take, especially not at this at this juncture in the game. You you want to make sure if there's somebody you, we always say it anyway. I mean, why not use Tristan? So I'm not going to just go sit down and just learn Facebook ads. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm I'm only saying that because unless I have to. Yeah. But if I got, you know, face, you know, yeah. Tristan Sutton Ads University. Right here, why not sit with this man? Ads cut, cut some t- the ads can't cut some checks and say, "Hey man, look, I need to get that, yeah. and I need you to cut my learning curve in half." If that means a six-hour class, a two-hour, a one-hour, or just chill with you, whatever, yeah. then that's what I'm going to do, right? So I'm here to be able to do that for as far as the wedding MC. I want to cut your learning curve in half. So you're kind of making like an Airbnb or Uber for wedding MCs. Yeah. So in, in, in its own way. And pick the ones that fit for them in their That's location, right. things like That's that. Right. That's innovation, people. That's yeah. how you turn your passion into profits. I hope you're taking notes, thinking about what you're <laughs> good right. at in your life, what you've been blessed with, and how you can turn that into a revenue stream or That's a right. asset of funds. That's right. Um, I got something from um, Inc.com, Inc.com. talks about eight tips on how to turn your passion into a business. We're going to try to get through most of them. Number one. Find the fault lines surrounding your passion. So what are the areas that um, aren't strong where they can um, prevent you from being successful? And this ties back to what I talk to you almost every other episode is have a SWOT analysis. Right. Strengths, weaknesses, weaknesses opportunities, yep. and threats. Yep. So look at your passion and see if it has a viable audience, like 2 million weddings a year, 100 a day. Um, is there a lot of opportunity? What are your weaknesses? Um, is it going to make you travel away from your family all the time? And what right. are the threats? Is it something that, hey, it may go away soon? So think about those kind of things. Uh, the next one was become an expert on your industry as well as aspects of doing yes. business. So you heard him say he became an expert at emceeing, becoming a master of ceremonies. He invested in his business with uh, very expensive microphones. He practiced and owned his craft. So what are you going to do to learn your industry as well as be an expert in business? So knowing how to do bookings, how to handle invoices, how to handle complaints, uh, taxes, things of that, legal contracts. It can't just be, hey, I just throw something up against right. the wall. That's it right. has to be a viable business, and you have to actually know what you're doing to be an expert in it. Mm-hmm. Um, third is stop listening to everyone else. If oh his friends God. that told him, hey, man, I think that's a stupid idea, yeah. he would not be going close to 500 weddings that's getting right. flued out and providing for his family that's right. and taking it to the next level. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell you what's funny about that. I just want to interject. The, the, the one thing I always say is is you you have to be careful that if, if something is given to you, mm-hmm. you know whether you believe in God, Allah, Buddha, mm-hmm. the universe, whatever, it didn't, doesn't matter. If if something is given to you, you got to be careful not to share that with some of the people that you know you're very close to. Because in its own way, people are in there, you know, direct competition sometimes with those same people. Right. And it's subtle. And it's subtle, it's subtle yeah. and subconscious, and people don't know it. It's not nothing that we want to hurt or hinder people. Yeah. But for the most part, you got to be careful. If, if something is given to you, then you it's it's up to you. It's not for anybody else to believe. True. It's truly up to you to believe. And the only way that it's going to get any daylight and get out of your head. Is you got to see it through. Mm-hmm. Is that easy? Oh, no. Can you imagine? I went into a genre that is not created as a genre. Yeah, people do it. They just didn't know what to call it. Right. And before I even came up with the brand, I was searching for, you know, some old cool colloquialism or either a, a, a name that was Ebonic or, 
I, I, you know, I was trying to come up with like yeah. an alias, just whatever it would be. And it, be yeah, and I was like, the wedding you see, I was like, that's who I am. I was like, nobody else has it. I'm, right. I'm gonna take it. Right. So I went and did all my due diligence, my paperwork on it, and I, I am the wedding MC. Legally. So legally. So so for the most part, say what you want, but yeah. you got to make sure that you believe in that. If I would have just been having casual conversations, I'm like, yeah, man, people know I am see, but they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a wedding MC. You're like, I'm a creative. You're like, what? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that, that vision is not in their head. So for them to be able to assume and believe it, I mean, of course, if it's your boy, I'm like, oh, that's what's up. You're looking like, right. Sometimes, sometimes you you can't discuss. You have to announce, right? And not only that, just do it. Because I always feel like the the way that we help the majority of people in the world is by doing. Yeah. Like like people watch you, people watch me, people watch y'all. They watch y'all, good or bad. They're watching. So my whole thing is that if you know you can control the narrative, mm -hmm. just go give them something to watch, something good to watch. Because my whole thing is they're going to come tell you. And when yeah. they come tell you, they say, Tristan, yeah. man, you didn't tell me you was going to be making Facebook ads in the You're like, Don't, I ain't going to tell you. Just keep your eyes on greatness. Yeah, just keep scrolling on your news. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> right. <'Cause it> meant, <laughs> right. So so if I'm going to give them something to look at, give them something to look at it. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it is your duty to be as great as you can be. Yeah. You have your bumps and bruises, but they're only temporary. Keep pushing. Yeah. And then when you bring it to life, what happens is you they won't even tell you you inspire them. Some people won't. Some will give you the give up the ghost, but they, but they won't tell you. But just know that you're inspiring. Right. And the one thing about it is get rid of your rearview mirror. You know what I'm saying? Because if you got your rearview mirror up, that means you're paying attention to the people that are paying attention to you. And if you know that, technically you ain't doing that. You can't see the front. That's right. That's exactly the right. Windshield's bigger than the rear. That, that's exactly right. There's more opportunity. In front. That's that's exactly right. Tip number four. That was good stuff. Tip number four, don't be a slave to your major. So, so many times I hear business or um, corporate corporate man, I'm an engineer. I got a degree in finance. I got a degree in this. <laughs> I can't go to this man has like seven degrees. <laughs> right. None of them in MC. <laughs> right. At all. So talk At to all. him about breaking the mode of, OK, I got to do something within my major. Right. I think I think. Well, let me say this. I think school was was something just to be able to give us the the platform to know that if we put our mind to something, we can complete it. Because right. it, it was more about the completion. And it's a social that, construct. Right. Of course. A social construct as well. But but it was it, finishing inspires you when you even when you don't even know that it does. It just right. it just does. Because the majority of our society, we, we spend more time starting stuff and, and no time finishing. Absolutely. So so 100 percent of people out in the world, they have ideas, but less than one percent. You know, actually brings them to life, yeah. whether you know it or not, right? That's true. So, so we know that's the case. Then I'm saying, I'm saying, to all of you out here, you cool, finish your degree, but don't let that be at a point where it imprisoned you to feel like that's where you just gotta be, right? Because right? Right, right, right. my whole thing is that we live in a, we live in an era now that's that's past, you know, from 30 years ago. My mom and them, if they got degrees or something, it kind of the, the society kind of locked them into yeah. being able to just do that. Yeah, but with technology and it being the way it is and, and as savvy as it is, it allowed us to do, to not only complete that, that that degree or whatever we were going after, but to be able to be open enough to continue to develop our minds and understanding in so many different aspects of who we are. Yeah. So so great when you you'll be amazed at how many attorneys probably have a real estate business yeah. you know i mean people you can't in this in this day and time based on this economic standing you can't just do one thing if it's if it's not bringing in almost seven hundred thousand dollars a month then from a technicality you need something else and all a lot of is we on the same you sound clock like mlm over there now. <laughs> or one of these, you sound like one of these coaches just pursue your passion to make six figures a month by posting online oh my is god to say? I, you know what? The no, no 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 shots on mlm you know because there's some people that do well out there but yeah, i you know they're, they're a slick few. <laughs> it is it is it is all right so <laughs> it's my show dang it come for me all right so um, we talked about don't be a slave to your major, but also even if you are in a specific, not just major, like an industry. So, mm -hmm. you know, I started off and still am for all those asking, I do still on my insurance agency. Okay. I started off as an insurance agent and then got into marketing because that's what my degree in from okay. Texas A&M is right. marketing. I'm a marketer that happened to be an entrepreneur that owned an insurance agency. Right. But now I have a marketing consulting agency. That's right. In addition to some of a multipreneur. So yeah. some people would say, hey, I'm a personal trainer. I don't want to go into this area because right. 
what do, what do people say? You right. know, hey, I'm a professor. Right. I don't want to be known as the wedding MC because right. right. what will people say? Right. Go get your bag. Right. Some opinions I ain't going to pay for your you, bills. And, and, and listen, <laughs> if you let opinions paralyze you, then technically you you might be out for the count. Yeah. I always say if you if you fall down, man, you got to get back up and you got to right. you got to do it so willingly and, and, and refreshingly to a point of where you don't worry about what, what people are saying. Right. And, and I think that's that's what the majority of people do, too. Yeah. You know, they get kind of stuck like that. But let me say this. The name of my company is Carl Mays Enterprises. Mm -hmm. OK, so underneath it, we have you have uh, the wedding MC, you have the king motivator and you have the king MC. Now, all of those are, you know, from a genre standpoint, they're in different genres. However, I do the same thing. I travel with a microphone. I'm, I'm always in front of people and, you know, and I make sure that I entertain in that in that sort of whatever that genre is. So so in its own sense, my my practice field, I've been a professor for eight and a half years. My practice feels technically, you know, being a professor. Yeah. So so I always say, you know, if I'm going to spend time practicing, I might as well spend time practicing with a lot of people. Absolutely. So I, my students would know that I was practicing using hand gestures, facial mm. constraints, a little joke here and there, yeah. throwing it in because I'm, I'm thinking about using it later, but I need to see yeah. how it works on people. Gotcha. So so when I would use when I would do gestures, I would be doing it on purpose only to be able to see if it would have the reaction of what I had planned in my head. So, so I was doing my, you are. That's right. So exactly. Because my, my thing is this. If I feel like the universe puts everything in place for you exactly where you need to be. Mm -hmm. And if 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 I was teaching at that particular time yeah. and that's where I was and I was, you know, pursuing, you know, you know, my, my other businesses and they were in front of people, they kind of went hand in hand. That's where I was supposed to be at that time. All right. Well, so, yeah. So I use it to my advantage. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're going to wrap up these um, eight tips on how to turn your passion into a business from Inc.com. Uh, number six was volunteer and sit on boards. Mm. What this does is gives you exposure to different professions, yeah. different industries, different thought processes. So you can have those people that are progressive around you. That's right. They can help feed and sow into your um, your dream and your passion and your desire. So mm -hmm. sit on boards. Number seven, make sure you have family buy in. Um, yes. So if you're in a situation where you're looking to start a business or you're in a business and you're trying to grow it, make sure your family has bought into the fact that you're going to have to be out there networking, you're going to have to be spending money, you're going to be reducing costs, you're That's going right. to be traveling, getting fluid out, That's right. things like that. What are your thoughts on that? I believe in that. Listen, if you, if, especially from a, a spousal standpoint, if, if your spouse um, or significant other or, you know, for those that, you know, common law, whatever, mm -hmm. Your, your, your relationship aspect is not bought in on each other's or either one's. And even the kids. Yeah, even, even the kids, kids yeah. even the kids. I, I have little kids, so they, they don't care. They just, as long as you bring some food home, you know, but but I would say, you, you know, if you have yeah. you know, kids that, that, that are decisive in, right. in life and you feel they feel like what you're doing does not match with it. Yeah. So, you know, more teenagers, teenagerish. Yeah. You know, but uh, yeah. So even your children, you want to make sure that they bought into what you are, what you have going on, because it doesn't it doesn't strain, you know, where you're trying to go. Right, right. You know, the, from a financial standpoint, having to have setbacks on cutting some things down, yeah. bills down in order to be able to make it work. Because, yeah, I mean, it, it happens. But but if everybody can at least if you if you're such a visionary and you can at least get them to see some of the vision, mm -hmm. then I believe that they, they'll buy in. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And last Bring those you are trying to support and who support you into the conversation. Yeah. So make them uh, involved in a process. Be involved. Of what's going to happen? Set expectations. Hey, daddy's going to have to be flying, you know, every other weekend. Yeah. Off for a couple of days. Yeah. Um, I might be out late some nights, things like that. So make sure they get an understanding of the process, the flow, the requirements, financial and, mm -hmm. um, you know, time wise as well. So, yeah. 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 I agree with that, too. I, I think that. Um, you, I mean, you said I, I can't reword that. I mean, I think that's yeah. that's exactly it. I mean, Inc. did a good job on it. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, but Inc.com is always good. That's a, that's a good resource. Yeah. Oh, man. So we got uh, Miss Cece Sutton here saying, and let me just say, I've seen Carl in action a lot of events, and this dude sets it off. Uh, Trish and I are going to get married again so we can hire him. <laughs> we truly have a gift for bringing him into life. Appreciate yeah. that, sis. Yeah, we want, yeah. We want the friends and family discount. Yeah, no, I got you. I got you. I got you. And we have Miss Natasha Wright. A word. Keep your plans to yourself, hey Carl. Then we have Miss um, Deborah Thompson. I love that. Don't just start a business. 
know how to run a business. So That's right. We run business, not business. There's a difference. Business, <laughs> not business. So there's a huge difference. There. Yes, business. Yes, <laughs> so do you got any closing words for those who are looking to turn their passion into profits? Yeah, I just, uh, here's the thing. Um, I do want to close with this. Um, you know, I just had a conversation this morning before I even got over here where uh, the guy was talking to me about retirement. Uh -huh. I just want to kind of break that word down a little bit. The word retirement only exists when people hate what they do. Uh -huh. I'll let that marinate for a minute because uh -huh. I think that that's simple. Yeah, let that simple. So, <laughs> so when you love what you do, and and again, in some facets of or, you know of, of, of people's industries, uh, unless their bodies uh, you know make them have to retire from what they do, then that's one thing, like sports. Uh -huh. But you know, from a generic standpoint, you know, retirement is something that it has such a finality to it that. You know, if you retire from from something you love to do from a technicality, you didn't love to do it. You didn't, you didn't like it. So so one of the things I always say, if you're passionate about something and and even if even if your peer group or friends, family, whoever, they cannot see what you know is for you. Then I say get to a point where you stop sharing and you go do. Because if you just get great at doing, eventually it feeds to other people. The best resource for being able to inspire people is just by going to be great. So if there's one thing I have to tell you all to do, just go be great and be great at what you love to do. Your passion will get you to where you need to be. And I'm not just saying something. My freedom, if I if if if, if I have to die trying to be, to be able to bring the wedding MC university and, and all the other aspects to life, then that's what I'll do. One thing about it is that the eulogy, my wife will say, y'all don't cry. Cry because you're going to miss him, but don't cry because you think he wasted time. One thing I don't waste is time because what's the one thing you're going to run out of? Time. So stop wasting. Mm. Man, so... I'm not going to mess it up. I'm just going to let it end <laughs> on that note right there. Um, you can find him at the weddingmc.net. That's right. The weddingmc.net. That's right. Um, anything else you want to tell him? Um, you know, contact your know, social media and all that. Yeah. So uh, at, you know, uh, at the Wedding MC King, I mean, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but uh, on, on the Wedding MC King, at the Wedding MC King, um, that's the, uh, um, the Instagram and um, at the Wed MC King. Mm -hmm. Um, for the other snap and uh, um, okay. Twitter, we're gonna get some content. So, with so yeah, branding. right. But you know, yeah, you know, you're, you're right. I know because I know Tristan is big on that. So the one thing about it is that regardless of what you, put, if you put the wedding MC King in the hashtag, it's, it's gonna be you're all big anyway. So there are a lot of them popping up. I'm excited about them. I've talked to you know quite. And when I say a lot of them popping up, they're not necessarily in this country. I think it's only it's, it's only maybe two other brothers here in the city that. They have kind of try to start standing out, which is cool. You know, I'm, I'm supportive. I'm definitely not hating. Um, but uh, one or two in the city that that have, that have kind of popped up. But then there's a guy in Canada I've talked to, and there's a guy in Australia, and then there, there are several in, in Africa that, mm -hmm. that are doing. So it's 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 definitely something that in ten years I can see is crazy. You you yeah. you have wedding seats everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, dope. which That's is dope. dope. Yeah. So I'm I'm excited about it. And you know, so to sit at the top of that mountain, man, come up with a university that I think people will be very fond of. Absolutely. It's going to be something that's going to be great. And if y'all need him for corporate emceeing as well, yes. you, you hear how articulate the brother is. Yes. So he can get your your conference, your convention, your seminar, your workshop, that's all right. that professionally lit, ready to go. Get your crowd ready. For that's you. right. So be sure to check him out there as well. So I got to put my branding in here. If you would like to learn more about how to grow your business and cure your revenue ailments, join our free Facebook group, the Revenue Clinic Group. So you can go to Bitly Revenue Clinic Group. It is case sensitive. So be sure to go to that link you see right there scrolling across the screen. Join. And we have some other previous episodes in there, free resources, things like that. If you are looking to take your marketing to the next level and want to learn how to use social media ads, go ahead and schedule a call with me, discoverycallgr8.com, discoverycallgr8, the number 8.com, and we can schedule a 15-minute appointment. Just be know, be aware that if you click on that link, my ads will retarget you for perpetuity. <laughs> That's right. And then I, I do want to say this, man. Y'all, Listen, y'all continue to support Tristan, man, because one thing I can say is, you know, I, I'm always here with this brother in in, in spirit and in, in things that he does. We we bounce stuff off of each other. But when it, when I when I see the revenue clinic, I get excited. Y'all make sure y'all join that that Facebook page. And the reason why I say that is because it's anytime you know you have a person that's 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 willing to be able to carry the torch to be able to give a platform to other entrepreneurs to be sharing not just what they do, but sharing nuggets. Right. 
right? That you don't have to pay for. So if you're just starting out and you got a business on the top of your brain, if you watch some of the past videos, this video, the revenue clinic, you might bring it to fruition. And at least your starting point won't be like all the other 30 two yeah. podcasts yeah. you already put up. So definitely, look, I always say it's something of value shared with everybody you know to share it with. And man, continue to support the Revenue Clinic podcast, man. It's it's, it's definitely something that's needed, brother. I, I'm proud of you, and I, I want you to keep doing it. Definitely appreciate that. That's definitely appreciate that. That's, that's definitely it. what this is about, is to make sure you can avoid those pitfalls. Yeah, man. And obstacles yeah. that are going to cost you money and time. So that's right. Y'all be sure to tag, share, comment, all of the above, and let folks know about it. Um, but we thank you for your time today. We will be back next week, Thursday, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's right. So follow me on Facebook, Tristan Sutton, um, and also on LinkedIn as well. That will feel we can catch up the next episode. Thank you for your time. Y'all have a blessed one. Go check out the wedding MC. Yes.